All right, guys. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I'm using six blind nuts. They're the size M14 and a 1.5 pitch. They have six blinds, meaning two, four, six. That's a special nut for it. These work very well with Dutch Magnums, Chrysler 300, Dutch Chargers, Dutch Challengers, and right now I'm just quickly doing a brake job here in the front. And um, these nuts, you can buy them on Amazon or on eBay. Sometimes they come or come not, don't come with the socket to remove them. If you do not get the socket with them and you get a very good deal, do it. You can buy these individually for under $5. Um, I'll show you a link later on on Amazon. I'll put it in the description below where you can buy those. Those are a big benefit to your arsenal. These are solid one piece Valladium. So it's a stronger steel. So it's one solid piece. You cannot strip them too easily. Most likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna break your socket before you break your nut. So these, especially if you're a Jeep guy, uh, where they have the hollow cups just put on and whatnot, get rid of those. Take those, they're solid one piece. And so far, they work like a charm. Just do me a favor when you tighten your bolts your nuts pretty much um, make sure that those are not over tightened uh, they love to tighten up because it's a very solid material um, I have aluminum rims as you can see they are 22's here and um, they get very stiff on it so make sure that you just go by the spec and put this The other two things you're going to need for your brakes brake pads. If you go cheap, get the wherever, the silver line. Uh, the number for the front is MKD 1056. Make sure your brakes are clean. This is a temporary quick fix job because I'm working right now on the knuckle so I need these only for a thousand miles or so and that's all I need them for if they're brand new they come in a shrink wrap the problem with the silver side is the shoes which are sitting here on your calipers they are not included One other tool I recommend for you guys to have is a six inch adjustable clamp. It's a quick adjust. You just push it in and it locks better in place. This way you can compress your piston. You need a 13 millimeter socket to get the bolts off, which are here in the rear. One down here, one up here. Just get it on and just get them loose. I loosened them up already because I was just running out and they gave me the wrong pads. So I just had to throw it back on and get the right pads. So guys, hold on for a second. So, sorry guys, wifey needed some answers. That's one method. If you get one of these solid ones, you can get these as a set at Northern Tools for like 20 bucks. These are very solid, so you can swing a hammer at it without breaking the security mechanism because it's palladium steel. 
So that's the recommendation. And again, it's a 13 millimeter in the back. These are 13. You have two of them in place. If now your caliper, this is your caliper part, this is the caliper bracket. If this does not come right away off, get a claw hammer on the magnums. The calipers have a little edge here where you can pretty much level a little bit on it. Don't get all crazy, just a little bit so that if they pop loose, then the whole thing slides off like so. Make sure you secure it somewhere. I put it right now just up here for the reason being. Um, there are your old brake pads. Mine are hot and mine are done. And I'm talking done, absolutely done to metal. Same as was the one in the back. Also done completely, nothing left. Before you install, your new brake pads. Take these shims out and take a look how dirty they are. Use some spray, um, preferably brake cleaner, to get those cleaned up. Those are very important parts, so don't underestimate it. I'll explain it in a second to you guys how to do it. Let me just find two things quickly. All right, I'll be back. So what I like to do, and everybody is a little bit different, so I love to take them out both, since sometimes they do not come in the set, you need a pair of those, you can buy those also individually, buy them online, don't go to the store, you pay too much. This is Quick Glow, which is a polish and is ash based. So it's biodegradable, you can put it on your finger without getting any chemicals on you. And you can see right now how dirty they are. And that's burnt in this brake pad was installed, I would say 40,000, 50,000, yeah 50,000 miles on it. And the important part is where your brake pads are sliding on. So, because this part, and I'm using the wrong grid right now, I'm using the ultra fine, I think, no it's a fine, but you can get it in three different strengths. So, just clean it so that it looks like this or cleaner and just run it over then you can reapply it into your brake shoes. If they sit too loose it's most likely that these safety pins are a little bit worn so just bend it back and it should fit a lot more snug. If not bend it by hand a little bit further back till you get snug fitment. Over the time these wear out because of heat. The heat softens up the metal and then the metal starts to bend. So same here I just run it quickly through just to clean it. You want to have these as clean and as lubricated lubricated as possible meaning no resistance on it because this is what guarantees that your brake pads slide easily back out after you t pretty much used your brakes otherwise if they get stuck on it you're gonna have a premature wear on your brake pads because they stay stuck on your rotors when they stay stuck on your rotors over time you're gonna hear a squeaking noise or it sounds like it's sandpaper rubbing on wood or steel 
um, that's the sound you're getting. So make sure that these getting serviced each time you service anything on your tire. Um, I highly recommend when you do change your tires or you also do a tire rotation to tell the mechanics to just spray some brake cleaner onto this area and clean those quickly for you if you don't do it yourself. Um, the main reason is why because it's longer lasting for your brakes you're saving money in the long run. A pair of these weavers cost you around $33. A brake job plus cost you plus a rotor and, and whatnot easily over a hundred. So if you if they charge you 20 bucks for it just go ahead do it. You have longer lasting brakes. So make sure that these pins not sure if you can see it. Let me put it in my hand. So hopefully you can see it. They are facing a little bit outwards. And that's what you need. Because for the top one, if it's too loose, it's going to fall down before you even get your pads in. So put the back side in first and then the front. And they just hold on. And because, and this is the main reason why I'm using this. This is good for high temperature as well. It doesn't burn up because it's biodegradable. There's nothing material-wise in it which burns. And as you can see, proudly made here in the United States, in Louisiana. I know the creator and owner of this. Um, it's a family business. Use it wherever you can. You can get these, and I put a link for this uh, in the description below as well. You can get these, I think, last time I checked, like $15. They last you a lifetime, pretty much. Um, if this dries out, just add a little bit of water to it. That's it. And it's pretty much good. You don't need to have a vacuum or anything. And this is a polisher in three different strengths. Fine, regular, and very fine. You can use for buffing out anything from plastic, glass, this one is also for chrome, silver, brass, porcelain to clean with. Uh, others are for, for metal and then they have it also that are ultra fine that is even for glass. So you can apply that on your glass and polish your glass with it. So on these brake pads, these are just, um, I think these are the metal ones. These are the cheaper ones. Make sure that these are clean on this side, that there is no oil or substance on it because that is your brake wear. On these little pins you want to have a little bit of lubrication. In my case because I put this on I don't need it. So I just put them in like so push in and good is they're gonna slide on its own. That's why it's important that these areas here are clean. So put the front in, put the back in. Sometimes the back is a little bit stubborn to get in. That's when you just take the front back out and then you put your back in first. Because of the shoes, when you put pressure in the rear, the front likes to come up. It's easier to e jug in the front part. Put them hand tight in and now comes the part where you run often into is your caliper is already extended far out because you had old brake pads. Means the thickness was a lot less versus a new one. Think about it. Big difference. It's like half an inch difference. Now you do it times two, and you're missing pretty much three quarters of an inch to an inch. So that's where I love these. This is not the best one, but I bought it, this one, which is the Olympia Toba Clamp. It's a six inch one. I got it from Tractor Supply, and it does do the job very well. Look out for the price on those. Sometimes they're on sale. When they're on sale, um, they're good to get. Sometimes the mechanism here for the quick doesn't work proper. Return it back, exchange it. Get yourself one which is working. So when you're in the store, clamp it 
clamp something in between and see if it is free running. Mine is already a little stiff because I overworked this part and the piston down there. But they are working very, very efficient for your calipers. All you do is you push back, doesn't take long, just push it in and you just start turning. And as soon as you are in, you just turn by hand. And if that doesn't give you enough leverage, use one of your wrenches. And it doesn't matter which way the wrench is applied, but you're getting force to it. And just retract it. Once the piston starts moving in, as easier it gets. What happens right now is the brake fluid which is in this piston gets pushed through your line back into your master cylinder. So you don't lose any fluid. And push it back as much as possible. Sometimes you can also use just a little extension tube on this just to get it easier moving. All in all, a brake job in the front should take you less than 45 minutes if you do it right and you have all your tools with you. If you don't have all your tools with you, you're going to run into little snacks and issues and then it's going to take you longer. So I always like to make sure everything is, is there. You have your wrench, you have your breaker bar, and I only use a breaker bar, so I don't even use a power tool because it doesn't really make too much of a difference. In the shop weight, you do it a lot of times. Then it's so now this caliper is almost pushed back. Back in its housing. So just make sure you have it all in. If you think you have enough, just take it off. And because it's a quick, just do the turn back, and then you can push in the security mechanism. You need a little bit of space because it's moving forward as you're pushing this in. So, I think three, four turns. Boom. Get it out. Now you see it's much further pressed in. So let's see if this one is already sliding all the way over, or if I need a little bit more. Need a little bit more. So now I don't want to do it in the socket, I just do it on the outside quickly. see how quickly this is pretty much all done in real time nothing is sped up I'm gonna show this video in real time so that you know all right so now the piston is all the way recessed if it's all the way recessed it goes onto your brake system easily and Make sure that you don't bend kink your brake line. Now you push it back on. And you're pretty much ready to put back in your bolts. Do the top part, top one, at least for my purpose, is the one which guides then for me also the lower. So once the upper is in, you just put the lower in, you don't even have to look really, and start scraping right away. Make sure you have two wrenches with you ready, because sometimes the outside likes to spin the inside piston, that is 
like a piece which is like this long in your bracket and it slides back and forth every I would say every hundred thousand miles when you do your brakes so every second time you do your brakes so to speak I would highly recommend that you take this out and put new lubrication in it so now I just hammer it tight a little bit super brutal on it just a little bit and your brake caliper is in place so you see now you have some easy play and it moves back and forth if this is not moving that means one of your pistons is stuck that also means that you get a very uneven wear now at this time you can actually do a couple things and che check your rotor this one is worn so this is just a temporary job for a couple hundred miles and that's it um, if the rotor is uneven worn like this one is you can see it on the mark here this is a solid line it should be one solid line it's not it has high and low spots that means your rotor is pretty much toast and your brake pads will wear out uneven um, since this whole assembly is going to be replaced and actually putting SRT on it I don't worry too much about it this is just temporary again so now this is all in place take your tire put it back over line it up correct remember which holes are which if you have stock you only have one pattern but if you're getting universals like I do you have one off one working one off one working because you have a different pattern on it get your five nuts get your long nut for the deep socket and just hand tighten them on while your tire is still sitting off the ground like so just hand tight oops you can use an impact wrench just to get them on but as you can see from the time it takes me I can do all this without the power tool just fine I'm missing one nut one nut disappeared on me and it's here somewhere are you sure There it is. Right underneath my kneecap. So once you have them hand tied, like so, once they are hand tied, you see it's a little bit of clicking, means it's a little bit more hand tied. Once they're on, to use actually your bar to put the last pressure on you can go while it's free spinning just spin your tire backwards and you get your nuts pretty much hand tied on Do it hand tight. There you go. Now they are hand tied. Now you can actually take car down your car already. And because they are hand tied on, you will not put any wear pressure onto your threads. Now all I have to 
do is put the right amount of torque pressure on it in a crisp pattern. So you try to get to the opposite side each time tying down. There you go. Tire is back installed. And you're pretty much ready to drive. But one more thing: be very careful the first couple times you're hitting the brakes. So if you're parked on the slope like I am right now, start your engine, stay in park, and push the brake pedal a couple times through till you feel it stiffens up, till it doesn't change its travel way of the paddle anymore. That means you got the fluid back into the caliper to actually get the correct pressure rebuilt up to your piston. Because your piston only travels so much each time you push your brake pedal. And once your brake pedal feels the pressure built up here, it will not add more fluid, so to speak, to that caliper because now the fluid is level and the same pressure to all your pistons all around your car. So some cars have one piston per tire. The more luxury car you have, the more pistons most likely you have. Um, if you have the Dodge Magnum SRT, most likely you have your Bramos. The Bramos actually have four pistons, two on each side pressing onto your brakes. Um, that means you have a little bit more fluid being distributed evenly to apply pressure to your brake pads. You get a much better brake power. But that's pretty much it. Make sure you got all the air out of your system, so to speak, and everything repressurized. Now just take off with your some of the old brake pads on these rims and off we go because I have some work to do thanks for watching guys please rate and subscribe uh, thumb up on this video if you like this video if you have questions just leave them below uh, more videos will show up uh, quickly I have to also replace the fuel pump on the passenger side on this car so that's most likely one of the other videos you're going to see here soon. Other big thing, if you driving chrome rims and you forget to clean your rims frequently, they're going to look like this. You have brake dust building up on them and sometimes when you're using fiberglass brakes or high composite like I do for racing that brake material is flying off and actually burning into your chrome and if you don't have a protective layer on it like this was not enough, it burns through your chrome and then your chrome is permanently destroyed you can bring it back a little bit you can also clean it that's why I'm coming back to quick low this product actually cleans chrome. So let me grab another towel. So you guys see it right now. Not the prettiest. Put it on, smear it on smeared on. This product also leaves a corrosive protection layer. And I'd be generous here. I don't need that much. But you can use your brass wire wheel or hot cloth or get a to toilet brush. Spin it into your drill. You can clean this stuff. Very quickly. 
what I'm doing right now is just applying it all around to get some dirt off just to show you guys how well this product is for cleaning chrome. So you see it on certain areas, so if I just would try to clean it with paper, there's nothing happening. But as soon as I have that product, because it has <coughs> ash in it, it works like an eraser. And you get all your brake dust and whatnot very quickly removed. And I'm talking here very, very quickly. And that leaves a wax in place. As you can see, I didn't do anything. This is just a paper towel, nothing other than the product in it. I just do a couple here just to show you how quickly you can get your rims restored by hand. So you're just taking it off with a paper towel. You can already see the big difference. Let me grab you guys and do a close up. So there you see the rim. The area I just cleaned in a couple of seconds and what's not cleaned. So yeah, so if you're a car show guy, you want to have a product which actually really works, there's your solution. And the thing is, you can use it also, sorry for the shaky camera here, you can also use it to clean your lenses on your car. Let me put you guys back in here. Come on. There you go. Snap in place. And you guys can see it. So here I zoom in. You can see the difference already. Uh, like, uh, let me get it with the hand here right. So this is polished and right below is not. So again, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.